Right, oh, is, that, is that pointing at Craig? Is that pointing at Craig? Craig? I think more this way. No, Craig can see it. More? That's okay. You're, you're <laughs> sure, it doesn't look like it. So actually the first light I had here was okay, so by Speak now up. hopefully we're all over the jet lag and the hangovers. I don't know too sure if we are. Like, uh, yeah, we're just all going. Right? So let me start with the important stuff before we get on with slugging the group. Okay? <laughs> I could speak about how James and Erica's closest friends have travelled roughly 5,000 miles to be here with us and share a special day with us. The next sentence would normally be, it's amazing how far people would travel for a free meal. But in all our cases, I'm sure you'll agree, that's the fucking least you can give us. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of toasting to the usual punching above your weight, let's toast to some more reliable, uh, relatable points on James's behalf, like toleration, stupidity, bad eyesight, and lastly, just pure luck. <laughs> when I first heard James was dating a girl we used to go to school with, the boys tried to explain to me who it was. I didn't click straight away who she was and what she looked like. Back in them days, we didn't have WhatsApp groups or anything like that. So it wasn't until it wasn't until one of the boys said, "It's the girl that looks like all three members of Hanson." <laughs> 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 Gerbil here, not gerbil. No, it's a monster. 
Okay, needless to say, Erica has dumped her hands in Luke <laughs> and bought her hamster. Sandy. Sandy. And has grown up into the beautiful woman we have sitting at this table today. It's quite fitting that I was asked to be the best man for James and Erica at this wedding, because for the past year I have in fact been the third wheel to your relationship. Um, we've had a lot of takeaways, we've had a lot of nights out, we've uh, enjoyed a lot of flexi Fridays, which all brought a lot of great memories. This isn't a testament to how great a friend James has been to me, it's a, more of a compliment how you successfully cater for four children most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so a little reminder on how me and James are the friends we are today. We've known each other since secondary school, however in the past five years we've spent more time together. I was living in Dubford for a couple of years, knowing James and Erica were looking for a house. I text James uh, a link from ASPC with a house across the road, but along with the words, getting bought. I'm glad he did, and within a couple of months, James was officially my neighbour. It was so good, in fact, I left the country for the following three years. <laughs> <laughs> so me and James have been together for roughly 20 years, obviously a lot longer than him and Erica. As I said, we were friends from school and we came, became closer friends when we learned we had something in common. We were both boy racers. We, we always, he was always the guy with the endless money pin pit used to modify his cars. I never understood where the money came from. <laughs> and it certainly wasn't from rocking the Britney Spears style headset controlling your Tesco's workforce. <laughs> Oh, my As I got to know him better, I realised the people to blame for this ability for him to have the best car and best modifications was Doug and Elaine. <laughs> so can we all raise a glass to Doug and Elaine for being fantastic parents and bring it on. Doug and Elaine. Fantastic blue jigs. I know this marriage will last the test of time and there's one main reason that stands out above all the rest. Shortly after moving into your house in Dubford, James and Erica went through something that a lot of relationships go through when you're buying a house. This certain experience can go smoothly for some, but I know <laughs> personally, <for you. laughs> in Erica's case, this would be a living nightmare. <laughs> Obviously, I'm speaking about the time Erica ordered a bathroom for James. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I'm not even starting in the kitchen. Because believe me, after last month's experience, I was about ready to divorce James. <laughs> and saying that, the bathroom's still not fucking finished. There's nothing finished. The people will never be finished. Okay, so one more bit about James, and this part is called Only James. This will give you an insight to the kind of person that we're dealing with here today. Only James could take a job delivering Chinese, his butt. His delivery part of choice was a Mitsubishi Evo, and he spent his night racing Garfield Wallace in his Subaru Impreza. <laughs> and as they got back, they were delivering, they were comparing delivery times. So he actually spent more money on fuel than he was actually getting paid by the delivery company. <laughs> no sense. Right, this is a beezer. You've got to talk about this one. So when James worked at Tesco, he made sure that he would wear trousers with turn-ups. So as he was serving people at the kiosk, he would take the change, slip a pound coin down his leg into his turn-up, until he had three or four, and then when it came to lunchtime, it meant the good hard working residents of Dainston would be paying for his lunch. <laughs> so, only James in 2016 was the only person without internet punking. 
<laughs> I actually witnessed James enter a bank, transfer money from a savings account to a current account. This year, like 2016. It was only four months ago I convinced him to sign up. And to his amazement, it could all be done by your phone. <laughs> Only James could organise Darren Cattle Stagger in Magaluf for roughly 14 people. There was a bus journey to Edinburgh included. Unfortunately, James forgot to tell anybody about this bus. <laughs> so with a week to go, everybody had organised their own transport down for the holiday. Obviously, James lost his deposit and quite frankly, I have no idea how we made it to Glasgow. I Erica, drove. Erica must have organised the bus. Is that right? Did you organise it? I didn't know there was a bus until now. I don't believe it. Okay, right, this is a pizza. Only James could drive up the parkway from Tesco, probably the simplest, widest road in Bridgendon, end up in a cloud of smoke facing the wrong way, and in someone's garden. <laughs> I'll leave that one there. Good luck explaining that to Mummy and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you <laughs> 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 I'm grasping a good like a new hole in the kindergarten. These are my final words, and this is very serious. I know after this, you'll be saying that clerk should be listening to his own advice when he was going to Italian. <laughs> <laughs> but these aren't personal to me or you guys. Just a few points I believe that in an ideal world, ideal world would make for a great marriage. Never fail to communicate. We always have these little arguments, and we always will, because we don't always 100% agree on things. But if possible, try and reach a compromise before the argument stage. If something's bother you, bothering you, don't keep it to yourself, but also don't just go off on one. Step back, have a think, make sure you know all the facts, and talk about it. It's also important to come up with a solution for your problem. Uh, honesty. I'm not stupid. We all tell little fibs. And we've all heard the, the saying, what they don't know, won't hurt them. But before you go with this theory, just have a think and make sure you're not going to annoy your partner in the process. What they don't know won't hurt them only really applies for things like using the last of the milk, blaming Dudley for your own mess you made, and strippers. <laughs> uh, don't let that flame die. We all work hard. We need to appreciate each other's work, but at the same time, you need to make time for yourselves in the bedroom. <laughs> James, it has been a pleasure being your best man. Thank you very much for the opportunity. As a thank you gift, at home, I have a bottle of 21-year-old Balvenie as a little, with a little message scribed on the front of it. Uh, it's got a little message scribed on the top of it. So until you get home, there is a little sample. Aww. I've got you back. It's a And finally, please remember, if you need any, any sort of advice in the days or months or years coming, just ask the Core 7 WhatsApp group. Because we'll be serious.
I could start the speech by saying, for those of you who don't know me, but I'm pretty sure by that, by the end of these two weeks, you're probably thinking, I wish I'd never met you. <laughs> um, well, I'm Laura, and I'm happy to be one of Erica's bridesmaids, and I'm honoured to be able to stand up here today, having the privilege to let everyone know what I see in Erica and James. It's been a long 16 years for Erica and me, and once you met James, Erica, I had to learn how to share. What can I say? We've truly been through it all. The parties, the drama, the laughing, the crying, and of course, back in secondary school, all the boys that would chase after your fine butt. You absolutely <laughs> deserve the Reader of Award. Yeah. To me, no one was ever good enough for my Erica, at least until you came along, James. And even then, I had my eye on you. Erica, as we grew up together through the years, we've always been each other by each other's side. In all honesty, I couldn't ask for anything more than a friend. I'm so confident to say that she's the most focused, stable, ambitious, down-to-earth person I've ever met.
May your love be like the wind, strong enough to move the clouds, soft enough to never hurt, but always never ending. So here's to love, laughter, and happily ever after. I love you both very much. Yeah.